This video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Today's sponsor, private internet access. And I'm here to tell you about today's sponsor, ExpressVPN. Sponsored by CyberGhost VPN. Thanks to the fine folks at NordVPN. But first, a word about our sponsor, ExpressVPN. Thank you to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video. Let's talk about them for a quick sec. If I had a dollar for every VPN brand deal that I've seen, I could probably buy a lifetime subscription to one of their services. But I wouldn't. Hello world, Noah here. Today we're going to be talking about VPN brand deals. Now if you've been on YouTube lately, you've probably seen pretty much every single creator promoting some sort of VPN. VPN brand deals have gotten even more common recently because more and more people are staying at home and spending more time on the internet, and so I guess these VPN companies are getting more and more customers and spending more and more money trying to get even more customers. These VPN ads make bold claims, like they'll single-handedly protect you from hackers, or they'll let you watch any show on Netflix, even if it's not available in your country. These VPN ads can be misleading at best, and downright false at worst. And so in this video, we're going to take a look at what a VPN is, what it does, and then we're going to tackle three claims. First, that VPNs will protect you from hackers. Second, that they'll let you watch content that's not available in your country on a streaming service like Netflix. And third, the claim that these VPNs don't store any logs or track any data. Now before we go on, I want to make two things very clear. First of all, I'm a fan of all of the channels that I showed in the beginning segment of this video, and I mean no ill will towards them by using them as examples. See, when you get a brand deal like this, the company's going to send you a script, and you're just going to read the script. And of course they're going to send the same script to everyone, so if you go on YouTube and see everyone saying the same thing, why wouldn't you say the same thing? Now the majority of these channels are not tech channels, and so I don't fault them for not doing the research and knowing exactly what they're getting themselves into, especially considering how hard these VPN companies push the messages that they push. Second, the purpose of this video is not to say that VPNs are bad or that there's never a good reason to use one. There are sometimes good reasons to use a VPN, and we'll discuss these later on in the video. The point of this video is just to say that a lot of the claims that the VPN companies make are misleading, and that even though these VPN companies are telling you that you need their service, perhaps you don't. And with that, let's get started by talking about what exactly a VPN is. VPN stands for Virtual Private Network, and its intended use is to allow your computer to connect to an external network, let's say a home, school, or work network, and then have your computer act as if it's physically connected to that network. So for example, the computer science department at my university has some Linux machines that we can remote access to run our code on. But in order to access these machines, you have to be connected to the university's Wi-Fi. So if I'm not on campus, I can use the university's VPN to access their network, and then I can access these servers as if I were physically on campus and connected to the Wi-Fi. These VPN companies that you see in the ads use the VPN protocol but for a different reason. They basically just use it as a proxy, so all of your web traffic goes through a VPN server instead of connecting directly to all of the websites that you're trying to access. So without a VPN, let's say that I want to go on the internet. I can open up my browser and go to youtube.com, for example. My web browser will go through a bunch of hoops in order to do some sort of complicated things that I'm not going to get into, uh, but eventually it will establish a connection to uh, one of the YouTube web servers. It'll send a request saying what the user is trying to get, as well as some other important information. Then the YouTube server can do its magic to figure out how to fulfill that request, and then it'll send back a response giving the data uh, that the user requested. Then the connection is closed and you're good to go until you try to go to another page and make another request. Now with a VPN, all of this is routed through to a VPN server. So when you try to go to youtube.com connected to a VPN, your request is sent to the VPN server, then the VPN server will handle making the request to the YouTube server and getting the response back, and then the response is just forwarded back to you through the secure VPN tunnel. That's a super basic and reductionist overview of networking and VPNs, but it should give you a good idea as to how things work for the purposes of this video. So now let's take a look at the first claim that all of these VPN brand deals make, that VPNs will protect you from hackers. Now a lot of these VPN ads will claim that you should always use a VPN when you're connected to a public Wi-Fi network, like the one that you'd find at a coffee shop. 
or else hackers will be able to steal your personal information, credit cards, passwords, and so on and so forth. And while this used to be true, or at least more true than it is now, this is largely false these days. You've probably seen a little padlock icon in your browser when you visit most websites. This padlock signifies that you're using a secure connection to the website. This means that all of the data that you send to the server and that the server sends back to you is encrypted. As far as we know today, the security that's used on the web is computationally infeasible to break. Basically what that means is that hackers don't have a better way to break the security than to just brute force and try every single possible key to decrypt your data. And there are so many possible keys to try that it would essentially take forever to try them all. What this means is that as long as you see a padlock icon on every website that you connect to, even if a hacker is able to launch a man-in-the-middle attack and basically intercept all of the traffic that you're sending to web servers and that web servers are sending back to you, all they'll see is a bunch of gibberish. In order to see what this looks like, we can simulate what a hacker would see if they try to listen in on your web traffic. Okay, so here on the left, I have a completely stock instance of Firefox. And then here on the right, I have Wireshark, which is a widely used network analyzer. It will basically let us analyze all of the traffic on my Wi-Fi network. And so first, let's go ahead and access an unsecured website. One good example is the MIT homepage. So I just added a filter to make the results easier to understand. This is my IP address on my network. This is the MIT web server address. I'm going to go ahead and start recording, and we're going to go to MIT.edu. And as you can see, a whole bunch of packets come through. And this one's probably the most interesting one um, that we're going to take a look at. Basically, you can see that there was a packet um, from this source, which you can easily figure out is the MIT web server, and then the destination is just, you know, my computer. The protocol is HTTP, which is unsecured. And as you can see, um, this is an HTTP response. It has some HTML in it. And in fact, if I go down here um, to take a look at this, I can see right here the entire contents of the response. And so if a hacker is able to intercept traffic to an unsecured website, they will indeed be able to see everything that you're sending to that website and everything that that website is sending back to you, which is definitely not good. Now let's go ahead and try a secure website. I'm gonna go with YouTube, and this is one of the many web server IP addresses for YouTube. It seems to be the one that my computer is using right now. So let's connect, we're going to youtube.com, and as you can see, a whole bunch of data comes through. Once again, you can tell uh, that the source is YouTube if you just Google this IP address um, or you know look it up, you'll be able to tell. Um, but now you'll see the protocol is TLS, which is Transport Layer Security. That means that it's secure. And now if we take a look at the data that we're getting, it's just complete gibberish. So whereas before we could see the full response, now all we see is the encrypted data, which is really not of any use to a hacker. So finally, I've gone ahead and connected to the VPN server for my university. And now you'll see that even though I'm using the same filter with the same uh, YouTube IP address, refreshing YouTube uh, does not cause uh, more packets to show up. And in order to demonstrate this, I'm going to delete some of these filters and just have the filter for my local IP address. So I have to hide the IP address of my university's VPN, but now there's only one server that I'm connected to, which is the VPN server. And so now even my unencrypted data will be encrypted. And as far as a hacker is concerned, I'm just connecting to the same server over and over again, so they can't even figure out what websites I'm connecting to. So as you can see, when you browse an unencrypted website, the VPN does indeed encrypt your traffic. However, when you're browsing a website that's already encrypted, the only added benefit that a VPN has is that it will hide the domain that you're visiting. This is definitely a benefit because anyone snooping on your traffic won't even know what websites you're visiting, but as far as the claim about stealing credit card data and passwords and all that, it's not going to happen on an encrypted website. And you'll find that any trustworthy website is secured. So this security claim is what actually prompted me to make this whole video. The other claims are not quite as egregious as this one, but this really annoys me because basically these VPN companies are using fear in order to sell you a product that you really don't need. So now let's take a look at the second point. 
So one of the big benefits of VPNs that has been promoted a lot lately is the fact that you can use a VPN to fake your location and access content on streaming services that's not available in the location that you're currently located in. So for example, if there's a show on Netflix that's not available in the US, but that is available in Canada, you can connect to a VPN server that's located in Canada and access all of these shows. And this is absolutely true. When you use a VPN, you're tunneling all of your web traffic through a server. So whatever country the VPN server is located in is where the request will come from. So even if you're located in the United States, when you make a request to Netflix, it goes through a VPN server that's in Canada. And then when Netflix gets the request, the request is coming from a Canadian VPN server and thus Netflix will think that you are in Canada. Now, while this is absolutely true and it is a solid benefit of a VPN service, you should know that it violates the terms of service of pretty much every single streaming service out there. To give the example of everyone's favorite streaming service, the Netflix terms of service says, you may view Netflix content primarily within the country in which you have established your account and only in geographic locations where we offer our service and have licensed such content. You agree not to circumvent, remove, alter, deactivate, degrade, or thwart any of the content protections in the Netflix service. And you can find similar language in the terms of service for Hulu, Amazon Prime Video, HBO Max, and pretty much any other streaming service that you can think of. Basically what this means is that if you access Netflix while you're physically located in the United States, you are only allowed to access content that is available in the United States. Accessing content that is not available in the United States is a violation of the terms of service and Netflix has every right to terminate your account. It would be very easy for these services to detect VPN users if they wanted to. One method would be to compile a list of the IP addresses of all of the most popular VPN services and then flag any accounts that make requests from these VPN servers. Another approach would be to look for where the requests are coming from for each account. So for example, if there's an account that makes a request from the United States and then Canada and then somewhere in Europe and then the United States again all on the same day, it's pretty clear that this person is spoofing their location and their account again could be flagged. Now, are these streaming services actually going to go after you and terminate your account? Probably not. I mean, I guess if these VPN companies are advertising this as a feature, they probably haven't had too many instances of users getting their accounts flagged. However, these streaming services are well within their rights to deactivate any account that is bypassing their restrictions and violating their terms of service. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't use a VPN to access content that you otherwise can't access, I just think that you should know the risks before you start using a VPN. But of course, these VPN companies aren't going to tell you something like this. And finally, let's move on to the last point, that VPN companies don't keep any logs and don't track what you do on their services. Now, this is probably true, because if a VPN company is going to claim that they don't keep logs, and it turned out that they actually did, they would lose all of their credibility immediately, and they'd probably just be put right out of business. However, we really can't know this for sure. When you're using a third-party service, like some third-party VPN, you really don't know what they're doing behind the scenes. You don't know what kind of data the employees have access to, you don't know what kind of logs they're keeping, and you don't know what kind of tracking they're doing. You don't even know if there are backdoors in the system for governments or other entities to access this data. And the thing is, is that even if you have the technical know-how, you still can't verify it. Because as far as you're concerned, the VPN is essentially a black box. You establish a connection to it and it handles everything for you, but you have no way to audit it and see if it actually does what it says it does. So when these VPN companies claim that they're protecting you from hackers and spying from your internet service provider, you're essentially transferring your trust from the networks you connect to and the internet service providers that provide them to this VPN company, because all of the data is going through the VPN tunnel. So if you fully believe that your VPN company is to be trusted, then I guess you're good to go. But even the trustworthy VPN services can't always be trusted. For example, back in 2018, NordVPN had a security issue where an insecure remote access program was installed on one of their servers without their knowledge, and there was the potential for data to be leaked. If someone had connected to this remote access point, they could have viewed the encrypted traffic of all of the users that were connected to that server at the time. So in this case, the data was just as safe going through NordVPN as it would have been not going through NordVPN. Keep in mind that you're always going to have to trust someone, whether it's the network you're connected to, your internet service provider, or the VPN company whose VPN you're using. 
And given that you can't really verify if any of these things are to be trusted, I don't know if a VPN is necessarily more trustworthy. Once again, to be completely clear, I am not accusing any VPN companies of lying about their security or keeping logs when they say that they don't. All I'm saying is that you can't know for sure what these VPN companies are doing and there's no possible way that you can know. And so at the end of the day, it's about putting your trust in one entity or another. So that was a deep dive into the world of VPN brand deals. We discussed what VPNs are and why a lot of the claims that these brand deals make are actually misleading or perhaps even false. Now before I end the video, I know that I've said a lot of negative things about VPNs, but there are definitely some good reasons to use them. For example, if you do need to hide the domains that you're connected to, a VPN can help you do that. The content of the pages that you connect to will be encrypted as long as you have a secure connection, but as we saw in the demo before, a VPN will also hide the domain names. Additionally, being able to fake your location and access content that you otherwise can't access is important in some cases. If you live somewhere with an oppressive government that restricts your access to information, you can use a VPN to bypass their security measures and access this information freely. And of course, you can still use it to watch Netflix shows available in other countries, as long as Netflix hopefully doesn't catch you. Again, the point of this video was not to say that VPNs are bad or that they have no use. It was to talk about why these brand deals misrepresent the use of VPNs. I hope that this video will help you to be a more informed consumer. If you were considering purchasing a VPN service, or if you already have, perhaps you'll reevaluate what you think. I can promise that you'll never see a VPN brand deal on my channel, and hopefully the VPN brand deals that you see from other creators will be more truthful in the future whether it be the VPN companies revising their scripts to be more truthful or the content creators doing a little bit more research and figuring out what exactly they're promoting. And to emphasize one more time, I am not putting any blame on any content creator for taking a VPN brand deal. I'm sure these deals are very lucrative, they're all over YouTube, and why would you have any reason to doubt these companies when everyone else is doing the exact same thing? So I hope this video gave you a better idea of what VPNs actually do and that you'll include it in your consideration when deciding whether you need a VPN service for yourself. So as always, subscribe if you wanna see more, comment below with any topics that you'd like me to cover, and if you like this video, hit the like button. See you guys next time, bye for now.